Do you ever have games that just transport you back to simpler times where games didn't have to hold your hand because it was immediately understood how to play them because of how intuitive the design was? Heidelberg 1693 is just that. Developed by Andrade Games and released on Steam a little over a year ago, this indie gem has finally made its way to consoles, and let me tell you, I am hooked. Heidelberg 1693 is an extremely difficult 2D action platformer. You play as a musketeer for King Louis XVI in a fucked up alternate timeline where zombies and demons have taken over Germany. There is a story here, but I'll be honest, I didn't pay attention to any of the dialogue. It just never gripped me, honestly, but the cutscenes are beautiful to look at and serve as a nice break in between the sweat-inducing levels. There's not much in the way of mechanics because there are only a few buttons, so as a result, there isn't a tutorial, so I'll give you one now. Your sword is used by holding the right trigger or R2, your jump and double jump with X or A, and you shoot with R1 and L1 or right bumper and left bumper, and that's it. You know how to play the game now. Oh, and you can downward strike just by holding down when you jump. Simplicity is a beautiful and rare thing in video games nowadays, and Heidelberg 1693 feels like a love letter to such games. There's secrets strewn throughout in the way of hidden areas and new weapons, the boss fights are a blast, albeit maybe a little bit on the easy side, the controls are smooth with only a limited amount of jank, and this pixel art consistently throughout the game gets better. In fact, this might be, in my opinion, the best pixel art I've seen in a video game, which is why it's kind of a shame the game gives you almost zero breathing room to actually look at this beautiful work of art. From the foreground to the background, there's so many cool little details that most people are going to miss in this game because the developers decided from the moment you spawn, if you're not going to move, you're going to die, basically. No ifs, ands, or buts. The game basically plays like a constant running gun mission in Cuphead, though, with way more checkpoints in comparison, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Each checkpoint basically feels like its own boss, and the intensity of trying to reload your musket while your enemies surround you is fucking intense. Now, I consider myself pretty decent in the 2D platform genre, but in the roughly 2-3 to three hours it took me to complete Heidelberg, I died a total of 670 times, so maybe I'm not as good as I thought. But there are a couple parts that are for sure brutal and will test most people's patience. All in all, I obviously love this game, from the comedy of your enemies killing each other for you, all the way to the trophies, which also are probably my favorite to look at. But there are a few faults with it. First off, I do think the game needs more variation. There's one mission that I'm not going to spoil for you towards the end that was so cool to look at and different from the other mission, but it literally lasted like 15 seconds and it made me want more. Also, with how convenient the boss's checkpoints are, I think they pussied out a little bit on the difficulty for them and that's a shame because they're so cool to look at and it's kind of jarring with how hard the main levels are. Another gripe I have is there's a little bit too much RNG and just things in general going on in the screen. At times to where it can be extremely frustrating trying to learn patterns when there simply are none. I almost wish the game was more about memorization instead of what felt like lucky runs. And last, in terms of replayability, while I think it's infinitely so just based on the type of game it is, I think the game would have benefited so heavily from permanent unlocks like character outfit customization or the ability to unlock muskets permanently, really anything other than simply just trying to get trophies or a high score. All in all though, it's a game that I highly recommend, especially for the $15 price point. It's an 8 out of 10, take it or leave it.